So Stable Diffusion announced TripoSR, which effectively enables you to generate 3D objects from single images. And they've sourced, you know, open source the source code, the model and everything you need in order to run this locally. And they also have a hugging face demo, which I'm going to walk you through in this video. I'm also going to be showing you how you can set this up locally if you're interested in running the model locally as well. So you can see some samples here. This was the image and this is the output that was generated. Similarly for this image, this output was generated and you can see the accuracy of the generation looks way better than some of the previous models that we have seen before. You can see the image only shows the front end of the image or the front side of the image, but the generation also accounts and generates the, you know, backward part of the image, which a lot of models have struggled in the past, especially for this robot, it looks very, very good. And these antennas going backwards are aligned really well. We'll also be using a 3D online viewer to visualize the image that is generated using the model. You can see this is one of the samples that I'm viewing here. And this is a proper 3D sample. This can change the way, you know, graphics for games are created or videos are created or small animation movies are created, right? So it has a bunch of applications across AR, VR, gaming architecture and so on and so forth. Again, like I said, it works using just one image and you don't need to have multiple meshes or multiple image samples for the same image itself. You can see there is a quantitative comparison with respect to F score and inference time taken. Triple SR is at the top, which means this is the state of the art model when it comes to 3D image generation. You can see blue one is Triple SR and it's on the top here. And here are some of the samples generated by other models for the same images that you see, at least for some of the images that you see here. This is the burger image that I showed you. And you can see this is, this is how it looks across these open LRM versus Triple SR. So Triple SR does a really good job versus you know, the other open LRM model here. You this can read about the technical details, but I'm just going to show you how you can set up the model locally if you want. And they, by the way, use this data set. What is data set? It's effectively the training data that has been fed to the model in order to get, you know, where it is today. So they've used this data set to train this the model the and you can see this consists of a lot of 3D based objects, right? Anyway, so if you want to set this up locally, go to this GitHub page on the GitHub page here, you will be able to find the instructions, but I'm just going to walk you through these instructions anyways. See, it's a Gradio app that that is the same Gradio app that is running on the Hugging Face. So if you don't want to run this locally and you just want to play around and test it out, don't worry about installing it. You can see there is the model card here where you can download the model and then obviously you have some samples here. This is the, you know, sneak peek from the technical paper here across these different models. So this is the zero shape model, then there is the open LRM. So this is basically a comparison of how separate images process using these different models, right? So you can see this is how the mesh is detected in zero shape, TGS, triple SR, and this is the final generation. You can see the shadows are very sharp as well compared is... to the ones that are generated across these different models. Anyways, it's like I said, based on their own comparison, it seems like this is the state of the art model. And we are anyways going to be testing it out, right? So again, like I said, if you want to set this up locally, you need to first clone the repository locally and then update the setup tools, install requirements.txt, which is basically the packages that you need to run the model. And then you can run the Gradio app locally, right? By just saying Python Gradio app dot pi. And then this will run the model. It's as simple as that, but it, it looks exactly like this. And I'm going to show you how that works. I'm going to be testing out some of the samples that I found online or some of the interesting images I found online. So don't worry about setting it, setting it up locally if you don't think you're going to be using it extensively. Again, if you want to set up locally, here's the model. You can go to stability AI slash triple SR on hugging face and you can download the model from here. So you can see model.ckpt. This is the file you need. Click on download the button is here and it will download the model for you. Now uh, there is also an option to run this app by if you go to model car, you can see there are a bunch of spaces here. You need to choose the one with the stability AI triple SI you click here and this will start the app for you. Alternatively, you can also take, you know, click here on GitHub to go to the demo page here. So once you click here, you will be able to select the image that you want or you can drag the image here. I have a very hard image that I want to try out on. So this seems like a relatively tough image and I am going to be, you know, putting this in the model to see what kind of generation we get. 
You also have a couple of samples that if you directly just want to try out how the model works, you can select the samples from here. This is a very hard sample to test, but I just want to test it anyways to see what kind of generation we get when we try uh, an image like this. You can see the generation is already done. Now this is the processed image and if you want to download the object, which is actually the 3D object, you need to click on the download button here. This will basically start the download as you can see here and actually see the mesh that is generated. <laughs> I honestly don't think it's done too well. You can also look at the GLB file, which is like a darker appearance, but it says download to get correct usage. So this is the object that was downloaded. Just going to drag it here and this is the generation. Like I said, this was one of the tough generations that I had to do and this wasn't even like a proper 3D image. But this is what it generated from the image and I'm going to try something else now because this one uh, looks terrifying to be honest. Next I want to try this image. Um, I don't know what this is but it seems like a proper 3D mesh so I hope the generation looks better. By the way notice how fast the generation is. It took around 3 to 4 seconds to generate the final image as opposed to you know the image generation capability. It's like generating the entire image from scratch. So it seems the generation is done. You can download it again by clicking here, which should start the download for you. You can see this is how the mesh came out. It's still not perfect when it comes to the back side of the image, but the front side of the image is done relatively well. It's not too bad to be honest. Let's try one more image. Now, if you try the samples that they've shared here, the generations will obviously come out better because these are all hand-picked samples and they are expected to be generated as they are trained to generate, which is better than the ones that we are trying. But let's just try one more image and see if that can make any difference. I'm going to be trying this image now and I'm going to click on generate. In the meantime, let's look at the 3D generation of this image. You can see this one, this one looks better. Again, it's not perfect because the face is messed up, but it, at least it has some component of the person behind as well as opposed to the ones that we tried before. But this one is ready as well. I'm going to try, try this one out now. This one came out okay because you know the entire uh, mesh is correctly showing or referring to the body overall, which wasn't the case with, with the generations you know we tried previously. So I think overall the model looks good and it has great use cases at least around gaming and I think it's still not there when it comes to using this completely and replacing the manual process of 3D creation but at least it's good progress when it comes to objects like these which are also you know in one way or the other components of a video game right so it this seems is the... like I can process this one final image let's see if I can process it. This is actually an AVIF image, so I don't think it'll work. It works on JPEGs, uh, I think only, but, and you can see there are certain tips here that you can also refer to. If the result is unsatisfied, you can increase the foreground ratio. It might improve the results. It's better to disable remove background for the example since they have already been pre-processed. Otherwise, please disable remove background only if your input image is RGB with transparent background. So again, this you can play around with the settings here. To see if your output generation looks better after this, you can see I messed up the mesh here. You can see there's the, this object and the previous generation. But overall, I find this very interesting for at least the gaming use cases. And it's promising. Again, like I said, it's open source, so you can play around with what they've shared and train the model if you need to, if you feel that you can improve this for your use case. But that's going to be it. Thank you so much and have a good day.